So this week, the UK government is starting to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda. And it might seem like a weird or even inappropriate subject to raise, but I want to talk about the asylum process and money. Obviously, financial reasons are not why we should participate in protecting refugees from around the world. That should be a standard part of our responsibility as a global citizen and the part of the way that we try to bring peace and stability and keep people safe around the world. But the fact is that for millions of people around the UK, the terrifyingly high cost of asylum is exactly why they are so opposed to letting people into the UK and it's why they're so angry towards asylum seekers themselves. So let's just look at the numbers. The asylum process in the UK costs us about one and a half billion a year, and that is not a, a, an insignificant amount of money, that is real money. Deporting people to Rwanda is going to have no impact on that. It's not going to reduce the cost of that at all. In fact, it, it is very clear that it costs kind of the same to accommodate an asylum seeker in the UK as it does to deport the same asylum seeker to Rwanda. And let's not forget that when we deport people to Rwanda, some of them might quite legitimately then want to take legal action and sue after what has happened to them. And you might be thinking, surely they've checked this through. But in actual fact, some of the people they are planning to deport to Rwanda are, wait for it, children. Yeah, the UK government is deporting people who charities and the individuals themselves say are 14 or 16 years old. Um, but the government has said, well, I know we've had a look and we reckon you look about 20. Um, so we're going to deport you anyway. And of course, when paperwork shows up that establishes that the charities were right um, or that the individuals were telling the truth or so on and so forth, those individuals will be in quite a strong position to demand some sort of financial recompense from the government. So there's all sorts of reasons why this could end up costing us more, um, along with the moral cost of knowing that we're just treating people in the most despicable way and failing to live up to our international like standards, that which, which nobody is in denial that we're basically breaking international law doing this. It's not going to save us any money. If we want to save money, on the asylum process, there are actually two very straightforward things that we can do. And the first thing is to front load the system, which by which I mean when people arrive in the UK wanting to claim asylum, we can give them really high quality legal advice straight away. It's been tried. We did a trial run of this. It works brilliantly. At the moment, we're spending one and a half billion a year on the asylum process. Last year, about 50,000 asylum seekers arrived in the UK. So we could legitimately have just given them 25 grand each. Right, And let's say we didn't, let's say we gave them 10 grand of legal support each. And, you know, all right, another grand of like short term accommodation and, you know, stuff to just look after them when they arrived. Um, 10 grand of high quality legal advice. At the moment, the vast majority of people who are granted asylum in the UK are granted it on appeal, not on their first claim. So that means that their first claim didn't have all the information, wasn't done properly, didn't fill in the form correctly, all that kind of stuff, which is not surprising when people arrive and they're given no help and no support and they're left basically destitute and suddenly they don't get the paperwork in line and they're not able to sort these things out. Um, if we simply front load the system and give them a big chunk of legal support at the beginning. A lot of them would get their asylum claims sorted almost right away. And those that didn't, we would know they really didn't have a legitimate claim because they'd been given all the support they could possibly be given. Um, and we could then, they could then move on with that process and go somewhere else, do something else, make a different plan from the situation. The other thing we can do is to give asylum seekers the right to work while they are applying for asylum and going through the process. It's something which they used to be able to do and we took it away. There are thousands and thousands of asylum seekers who have skills that are in demand in our society or indeed who are happy and willing to do work that, to be honest, a lot of people don't want to do because it's minimum wage, kind of unpleasant work, but people are happy to do it because they just want to get on with their lives. When I've worked with asylum seekers, one thing that many of them have said to me is that they come from countries that don't have a benefit system and they're uncomfortable accepting any support whatsoever from charities or from the government and they would much rather work and earn their own keep and they're quite happy to do all kinds of jobs that uh, that I might not think were all that fun or whatever and in a lot of cases they're actually very well qualified for jobs that are in high demand in the UK that we have a shortage of. Um, 
And if we did that, we actually then wouldn't have to pay for all of the legal advice and all of the support, because in a lot of cases, they would earn their own money and they would then pay for that and get the system going. Some women that I've worked with have been stuck in the asylum process for 10 or 15 years and legally not allowed to work throughout that process. I mean, just the cost of having people sat around in the UK who want to work and who aren't working for 15 years, we have to make that time period shorter by front-loading the system, and we have to grant people the right to work while they're going through that process. All of this would dramatically reduce the cost of having asylum seekers in our country and supporting them as they get through the process of determining their asylum application. We could cut this one and a half billion by a huge, huge amount. We could absolutely slash it. But if you are still angry about the one and a half billion or the smaller number that we could reduce it to if we made the process more sensible, let's put this into context. Rishi Sunak has just wasted 11 billion. Yeah, you heard me right, 11 billion of taxpayers' money. So multiple times what we're spending annually on the asylum process. So what happened is that he brought in this quantitative easing program that we're all hope, perhaps hopefully familiar with, or perhaps we've heard of it, we're not quite sure what it means. But essentially, um, they, they printed uh, 900 billion, um, and they then used that money to buy back government bonds from like pension funds and investment funds and things like that. And inevitably what then happened was that those organisations then had the money that because the stuff had been bought back from them and they invested it ultimately in the Bank of England. And the Bank of England then has to pay interest on that at the going rate. And Rishi Sunak didn't, at the time the going rate was 0.1%, it was a really small rate. Rishi Sunak didn't insure against that rate going up. And then that rate went up and now he has to pay a huge chunk of extra interest because he forgot to get insurance. It's like if you get a mortgage and you don't take out some insurance against the rate of your mortgage going up or you don't get like a fixed rate mortgage for at least a few years to guarantee that you know what your interest rate is going to be. He just like borrowed huge, huge chunks of money, 900 billion essentially, and agreed to pay the interest on that, but didn't insure against that interest rate going up. And so as a result, we've just lost 11 billion of taxpayers' money, like, oh, butterfingers, which would have been enough to like completely house every single asylum seeker in the UK, give them tons of legal advice, take them on a free holiday to Rwanda just to see the sights. And if you really care about the cost of what's being done in the UK, and if that's the driving factor behind your feelings on the asylum process and asylum seekers in the UK, which it shouldn't be, because you should be focused on human rights abuses and how we can protect people around the world. But if it really does come down to money, and I understand there's a cost of living crisis for a lot of us, some of the time it is going to come down to money. If it really, really comes down to money, then you need to be 10 times as angry with Rishi Sunak for just wasting that huge amount of money. And the fact, you know, and Pretty Patel as well, for the amount we waste on having the least efficient asylum system we could possibly set up. Because the people at the bottom of it are not the ones wasting your money, it's the ones at the top. See you next week.